Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to turn what word problems into, well, rectangles. It might sound strange, but actually turning word problems into rectangles is a very effective strategy for solving those problems. And it's something that people in Singapore learn to do from a very young age. And one of the reasons why their maths ability is so high. By the way, this method of solving problems using rectangles is called using a bar model. And we're going to look at how you might represent word problems, addition problems, subtraction, division, multiplication problems, using rectangles. So, keep your pencil and notebook close by and pause the video from time to time so that you can make a note of what I'm doing. Let's begin with an addition problem. Here's a girl. She has saved £210 from all her pocket money and birthday presents over the last year. Today's her birthday and she's given £25 by her gran. How much has she got all together now? Well, <coughs> for the bar model to work we need to have a rectangle. Here is a rectangle and this rectangle is going to represent the money that she started with. So this represents £210. Then her gran comes along on her birthday and gives her some more money. So I've got another rectangle here to represent the extra money that her gran gave her and you can see that I've deliberately drawn it or cut it smaller than the initial rectangle because I know that if this is £25 it's going to have to be smaller, quite a lot smaller than 210 So this is £25 and the question is how much has this girl got all together? Well, can you see how this bar model, this rectangle, helps us to see that this is an addition problem? If that's £210 to start with, and then her gran gives her £25, if we're asked to find out how much it is altogether, we have an addition problem. Okay, so then we would work that out by doing 210 plus 25, which is £235. Okay? The important thing is to be able to see that this bar model, this, these two rectangles here, represent an addition problem. The nature of this uh, problem solving strategy is that it allows us to visualise and to see the problem much more easily. We can see, hopefully, that this is an addition problem. OK, let's try a subtraction problem next. Here's the girl again. So we said that she would saved £210 then she got £25 for her gran. Well, she now decides to buy something that she's been waiting for for ages. I don't know what it is. You can decide what she spends the money on. We said that she finished uh, the last problem with £235. So here is £235. And the question is, if she spends £45 on that thing that she's desperately wanting, how much has she still got saved? Right, well we've got a question here as to how we represent the the fact that she's going to spend £45. What I could do, I suppose I could uh, I could fold back sort of £45 worth to show that this is what she's got left. I could I could get some scissors and cut that off but I think probably what would be useful so that I've got it on the page is if I just do a dashed line here and I say that this represents £45, that's the money that she spends on that thing that she wanted, then the bit that I'm after, the bit that she's got left, is presumably this bit here. Okay, this is the bit that I'm trying to find out. So can you see, just by looking at, at the way we've set up the bar model, that this has got to be a subtraction problem? I hope you can see that. The whole thing was £235. She then spent £45. And so if we're trying to find out this bit, then you can see that we're going to work that out by taking away 45 from 235 So we've got 235 take away 45 
and what do you get? 190. Okay, so this is 190. Okay, another problem solved. Next is a division problem. We've got the girl again. So she's got 195, 190 pounds left after she spent 45 pounds but was given 25 pounds by her grand. And she decides that she should probably save and put that 190 pounds in a bank account so that it's a bit safer and um, maybe get some interest. But there are five bank accounts and she can't choose which one to put her money into. So she decides that she's going to put an equal amount in each. Here is the £190. And she can't decide which bank account to put it in, so she's going to put an equal amount into each bank. And the question is, how much money then does she put into each bank account? Okay, if she does it equally. Right, well I've got a rectangle, I've got my bar model, and I need to try and represent what's going on here. We can see that it's sharing equally so we can understand that it's a division kind of problem. How do I show that using the rectangle? Various ways. I could, I suppose, fold it into five equal pieces, sort of-ish, like that. What I'm probably going to be better off doing though is just drawing the rectangle cut into five pieces like that. More hopefully, roughly, pretty much equal. Okay, the best I can do by eyesight. Okay, so the question is, how much does she put into ba each bank account? Well, each one of these portions now represents how much she, she, she's put into one of the bank accounts. So let's say that's bank account one, bank account two, bank account three, bank account four, and bank account five. And to work out what she's put in any one of them, or into each of them, we have a division problem on our hands, and we would need to do 190 divided by 5. £38. So she has put £38 into each bank account. £38 into bank 1, £38 into bank 2, into bank 3, into bank 4, £38 into bank 5. OK? So the important thing that we need to understand is that we can represent a division problem using a bar model as well by dividing up the rectangle into equal pieces. Here we've divided it into five equal pieces. Okay, we have one more problem to try and solve using the bar model. It's a multiplication problem. Here we have the girl again. She's got £38 in each of those bank accounts we said and she decides that she's going to leave her money in there for a year and see how much money she gets from interest. Well, one of the banks has an incredible interest rate, and after a year, okay, here's the money that she has in that bank account, after a year, that money doubles. That's amazing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't normally get that in a bank account, but um, for the purpose of this demonstration, the bar model, let's just say that we found some crazy bank manager who is prepared to double her money. So how are we going to show that using the bar model? We're talking about doubling it, we're talking about multiplying it by two. We've got one rectangle that size. If we're doubling it, presumably we need a second rectangle of the same size. So the question would be how much is in that bank account after one year? So that includes the amount that she put in plus the interest that she got. Well, I hope you can see that what we've done is to multiply the original amount by 2. So we've got a multiplication problem. We can work out the answer by doing 38 times 2, which is 76. OK, so in that case, uh, she has £76 in her bank account once she takes the interest into account. Okay, so that was me doubling it, me timesing it by two. If I wanted to use the bar model to represent timesing it by three, I would have needed to copy that rectangle three times. 
if I wanted to times it by four, I'd need a fourth rectangle, and so on, depending on how many times I intend to multiply. Okay, so that's been a short introduction to using rectangles to help you solve word problems. Um, now might be a good chance to go back, watch the video again, and just tidy up your notes a little bit. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.